Hi, this is George from the Return of the King channel. I'll be covering a lot of ground in this video, starting with the three eclipses that occur over America, and now a comet. By the end of the video, you will see that all the signs in the heavens that are described in Revelation chapter 12 will be completed between now and the appearance of the April 8, 2024 eclipse. The rapture, then, can't be far behind. At the end of this video, I have something you don't want to miss. Encrypted within the geography of Egypt, the Red Sea, and Israel is the rapture as described in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, and 17. At the sound of a trumpet, the trumpet of God, the dead in Christ rise first, symbolized by the Dead Sea. Then we who are alive, symbolized by the Sea of Galilee, where the account of the 153 fish occurred, we rise to meet them and the Lord in the air. To determine the nearness of the rapture, we need a key. That key is located in the heavens. Where would a red dragon dwell? A red dragon would dwell in a red sea. When we overlay the red dragon and the fishes, the key, on the map of Egypt and the Red Sea, the timing to what is most likely the final sign of the rapture of the church appears. On the day of the April 8, 2024 eclipse, the location of the eclipse, Venus, Mars, and Saturn will tell the story of our escape from the dragon. The exodus was a supernatural escape from the dragon Pharaoh. And then, at the sound of a trumpet, the trumpet of God, God came down and Moses went up. The exodus is a type or foreshadowing of the rapture. Before I cover this, we need to go back and look at the signs leading up to this message encoded in the heavens and the earth. In the coming months, two eclipses will appear over the skies of America. The last eclipse will be accompanied by a comet. The eclipse of April 8, 2024. The comet may be visible in the skies over America during the eclipse. The constellation in the heavens in which it appears adds to the signs of the coming tribulation along with the three eclipses. The path of the three eclipses form the first letter of the ancient Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph in Greek, the Alpha. The first and last eclipse form the last letter of the ancient Hebrew alphabet, the Tav, a cross in Greek, the Omega. In Revelation 22, 12, and 13, Jesus tells us this, Behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me, to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. One of the many signs of the soon return of the Lord is the Alpha and the Omega, which appears over America. Tom Horn in his book, Zenith 2016, explains how America was set up by the Founding Fathers to bring the Antichrist to power and its connection to Egypt and the pyramids. The intersection of the first and last eclipse occurs over an area known as Little Egypt. This is not by chance or coincidence. The first eclipse of August 2017 occurs here in the constellation of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. It occurs 33 days prior to the Revelation 12 sign. It occurs in the constellation of Leo in conjunction with the king star Regulus. Notice where Mars is located. It's located in front of the head and mouth of Leo. The tribulation begins when the Lion of the tribe of Judah is found worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, will begin to take his kingdom back from the dragon, the ruler of this world. We see the moving symbol of the red dragon, Mars, in front of the head of Leo, about to be devoured and destroyed by the true king, Jesus. The path here is the path of the solar eclipse that occurred in 2017. It occurred 33 days prior to the Revelation 12 sign. In Revelation 12, 4, we are told the dragon's tail sweeps down a third of the stars of heaven and casts them to the earth. It is the dragon, not God, who has sent his army to earth. The dragon is preparing for something. It's the 233rd day of the year. It's 133 days prior to the last day of the year. 
the eclipse begins in Oregon, the 33rd state. It ends in Charleston, South Carolina, which is located approximately on the 33rd parallel. Charleston is the location of the first Supreme Council of the 33rd degree Scottish Rite Freemasons in the United States, called the Mother Lodge of the World. In Scottish Rite Freemasonry, it is those members who obtain a rank of 32nd or 33rd degree who are followers of Lucifer. They believe that in the Garden of Eden, it was Lucifer who enlightened Adam and Eve to know truth, and it is Yahweh who wanted to keep them in the dark. This is the path of the last of the three eclipses, the eclipse of 2024. These two eclipses form the last letter of the ancient Hebrew alphabet, the Tav, a cross. Where these two eclipses cross is called Little Egypt. The rituals performed by the Freemasons to deify the Antichrist are based on the rituals performed by the Egyptians to deify the pharaohs in ancient Egypt. The next eclipse to occur is this ring of fire eclipse shown here. This eclipse occurs in the womb of Virgo. Within hours of the eclipse, the moon will leave the womb and head directly towards Mars. The ancient rabbis believed the sun represented God to the Christian, God the Father, and the moon, the Messiah. Just like one cannot look at the face of God or directly at the sun, one can look at the moon, which reflects the sun's light, and one can look at Messiah, whom the ancient rabbis believed was a reflection of God. When we become believers, we become one with Christ, he in us and we in him. He is the head and we are the body. So the moon can also represent Christ and the body of Christ. Revelation 12, 4 and 5 says this, His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a man-child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up, harpazo, raptured to God and his throne. What this sign is telling us is that the dragon and the angels that have decided to rebel against God are lying in wait to foil the rapture. They are lying in wait down here on the earth. We know they're here because the governments around the world are no longer hiding the UFO phenomena, but are slowly revealing the alien presence. Highly credible witnesses are testifying in congressional hearings to what they have seen. Alien craft and non-human entities, entities and craft not of this world. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. This last eclipse occurs in the constellations having to do with the rapture. And now a comet will appear during the eclipse in a location that tells of our escape before the wrath of the Lamb is poured out. These are the constellations having to do with the rapture. According to Joseph Zeiss in the book Gospel in the Stars, written in the 1800s, he is an extremely well-respected Lutheran theologian. Since the beginning, the symbol of the Christian has been the fish. The constellation representing the dragon in the sea is the sea serpent, Cetus. And what do sea serpents eat? They eat fish. The dragon of Revelation chapter 12 wants to devour the man-child, the Christian, whose symbol is the fish. In the book of Isaiah, we find what's called a type, a hidden prophecy, a foreshadowing of the rapture. The word type comes from the Greek word typos. In Romans 5.14, Paul tells us that Adam was a typos of Christ. In other words, in some way, Adam was a foreshadowing of Christ. We can't see the rapture in these verses until the rapture has been revealed. Then we can see the hidden prophecy. Your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. 
You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. For your dew is a dew of light, and the earth will give birth to the dead. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by. For behold, the Lord is coming out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no longer cover its slain. In that day, the Lord, with his hard and great and strong sword, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. The bands of the fish are on the neck of the dragon, restraining the dragon. At the rapture, that restraint will be removed by the departure of the Holy Spirit who dwells within all Christians. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 and 8, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. These verses tell us the rapture occurs before the Antichrist is revealed. The constellation of Aries represents Christ the Lamb. In Hebrew, the constellation is Tale, which means the Lamb. Taurus represents Christ the Judge and the start of the tribulation. Jupiter, representing the Christian from the Revelation 12 sign, is just days away from entering the constellation of Taurus and the coming judgment. From the Revelation 12 sign to the eclipse, it is six years, six months, and 16 days. Encoded within the time period is the number of the beast, 666. The sun, moon, and planets all travel in the same direction, from right to left, staying very close to this line, the ecliptic. So the story so far looks like this. The ancient rabbis believe solar eclipses meant judgment is coming to the world. The eclipse occurs in the constellation of both the fishes and the dragon. During the tribulation, the dragon is going to be used to bring judgment to the world. The lamb is going to snatch the fishes from the dragon in the sea, the beast whose number is 666. And before the lamb pours out his wrath on the world. When we leave, so does the Holy Spirit. The dragon will no longer be restrained, symbolized by the band of the fishes on the neck of the dragon. Jupiter, representing the Christian, is still in the constellation of the Lamb. We are not destined for wrath and taken out before Christ the Judge begins his judgment on the world. The bright morning star Venus appears above the tail of the dragon. In the book of Revelation, Jesus tells us he's the bright morning star. In the book of Isaiah, the fallen angel Lucifer is also a morning star. Mars and Saturn represent the other two components of the dragon's dark trinity, the Antichrist and the false prophet. The tribulation begins when the Lamb opens the first of seven seals, releasing the four horsemen. The eclipse occurs precisely on the band of the fishes. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes in front of the sun. The moon representing the Messiah and the sun, God, God the Father. The eclipse occurring on the band of the fish also symbolizes Christ coming to take the bride to the Father's house before the judgment occurs. John 14.2 In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? The location of the eclipse on the right band of the fish also precisely fulfills a dream I was given about the rapture in the fall of 2020. Later that fall, I had another dream in response to a question I had. I asked, does the moon in the constellation of the Lamb, Aries, have anything to do with the rapture? That night, I was given a dream symbolizing our wedding in heaven. In two days, the moon will move into Aries and the comet will appear between the moon and Jupiter. The ancient Jews believed comets were heavenly beings falling from heaven. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, morning star, sun of the morning? Also, universally across all cultures, 
comets have always been regarded with fear and loathing as omens of impending doom and destruction. So now we have, along with the signs I've shown so far, and there's more to come, a comet in the constellation of the Lamb who is about to pour out his wrath on planet Earth. This is an artist's rendition of where the comet will appear relative to Jupiter and the eclipse. The comet's name is 12P, Pons Brook. Two days after the eclipse, the second dream I had about the moon in Aries and the rapture is fulfilled. Jupiter from the Revelation 12 sign is just days away from entering the constellation of Christ the Judge, the beginning of the tribulation. The moon has entered the constellation of Aries and is in close proximity to Jupiter. The comet will appear between the moon and Jupiter. If the comet also represents the dragon, a heavenly being falling from heaven, it appears that the dragon is going to attempt to prevent the groom from snatching his bride away to heaven. The war in the heavens is found in the same chapter as the rapture and our escape from the dragon. What I believe is going to happen at the rapture is the appearance of spaceships from another world, a war in the skies above the earth, ships from God and ships from Satan. After we depart, the explanation given to the world is that we were abducted by aliens. Hollywood has been preparing the masses for the arrival of beings not of this world for decades. Paul tells us the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all the wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. God allows the war to occur because it's part of the strong delusion. God has an army in heaven. He doesn't need an army. He can take care of everything by himself if he wants, but he doesn't. He wants his created beings to take part in the ruling of the heavens and the earth. And that includes fighting the rebels who have rebelled against the Almighty, the fallen angels led by Satan. At the end of the tribulation, we return with Christ as part of his army to conquer the enemies of God, those that have joined the ranks of the dragon, Satan. We will then rule and reign with Christ on earth during the millennium and in the new heavens and new earth to come. This is what the sky will look like after sunset, two days after the eclipse. This is a photograph I took of the comet that appeared in 2020. I've added the moon and Jupiter in the correct locations relative to the comet. So this is very close as to what you would see that evening. Those of you who've been watching my channel for some time know the dream I was given in the fall of 2020, which is fulfilled very precisely by the eclipse of April 2024, which occurs right here at the end of the race. The dream begins in the deserts of Egypt here, south of the pyramids. I'm running the race with a co-worker named Steve, who's a believer. Every element to the race is important. There's a reason I'm running with Steve. It has to do with his name and that he's a believer and the crowns we are given. As we make this turn towards the city, I decide it's time to make my move and I kick up the pace and I leave Steve behind. When I go to check my sport watch, I find it's not working. I spend a considerable amount of time in the dream trying to get it to work, but to no avail. Without the watch, I'm going to get lost as it contains all my mapping information. This marathon race is not like races in the States where the streets are blocked off. When you get into the city, you're on your own. You need a map or you're going to get lost. So when I enter the city, I just follow other runners. Somewhere north of the pyramids, I get lost and I start looking around for a map of the race and I find one. When I look at the map, it says I'm here at the top of the V. In the dream, it hits me as very strange. The finish to the race was two perfectly straight lines in the form of a V. Prior to the V, the race meanders all over the place. Nothing is straight. When I wake up, I'm at the top of the V. I never finish the race. The race is completed 
when the eclipse appears exactly on the band of the fish on the right. When I had awoken from the dream, I knew the dream was prophetic. It was prophetic because of its connection to the Revelation 12 sign. When the three wandering stars that complete the crown of the Revelation 12 sign, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, come into the constellation of Leo, these three stars align with the pyramids. Prior to the Revelation 12 sign, I had been reading the book Zenith 2016 by Tom Horn. In that book, he explains the connection between the pyramids, Egypt, and the coming of the Antichrist. So I knew the dream was prophetic, but I had no idea what it meant. In the fall of 2020, I spoke of the dream in one of my videos, and someone commented that the V reminded them of the V in Pisces. This led me to look up the meaning of the constellation surrounding Pisces in the book, The Gospel and the Stars. It was at this point in the fall of 2020 that I learned the meaning of the constellations you see here. These, according to Joseph Zeiss, are the constellations having to do with the rapture and the start of the tribulation. At the time I was given the dream, I and others were trying to find the correct Jewish calendar so we could calculate the correct feast days. I was pretty much running out of gas on this adventure and I told the Lord, I need something from you or it's time to quit. That night I was given the dream. In the dream, my watch fails. The meaning of this is there's something amiss with the calendar we are using. What it is at this time, I don't know. So I decide to stop using the calendar and just look at the heavens for signs of our departure. As time goes by, I watch other watchmen's videos and Dr. Berrioff figures out what's wrong with a method used to calculate the day of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks. Pagan Sabbaths are being used to calculate Pentecost. They are being taken from the Roman calendar at the time of Christ and today from the Gregorian calendar. Mixing the two calendars causes Pentecost to arrive about nine days too early on today's Jewish calendar. There are seven appointed times, three of which are feast days. On those three feast days, all males are required to attend, as they are meetings with God. Pentecost is one of them. The other two meetings with God occur on the 15th day of the month, so one would think Pentecost should be on the 15th also. It will be on the 15th when you use the correct Sabbath. The other two feast days occur on the 15th day of the first month and the 15th day of the seventh month. Pentecost would then be on the 15th day of the third month on the correctly calculated Jewish calendar. Coded within the true date for Pentecost is the account of the 153 fish. The constellations that rise in the morning on Pentecost are those of the account of the 153 fish that you see here. The account of the 153 fish is about the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, as are the constellations that appear in the morning sky on Pentecost. The account of the 153 fish occurs at dawn. Since my last video, I inquired of the Lord, is there any other evidence that Pentecost occurs on the 15th day of the third month? I got the sense the answer would be found in these books written by Dr. Michael Heiser. To see the world as the apostles did, you need to read the books they read. Their worldview is not ours. Much of what you read about in the New Testament about demons, who are almost nowhere to be found in the Old Testament, can be found in the Book of Jubilees and the Book of Enoch. Demons are the disembodied spirits of the giants the offspring of the fallen angels and human wives. Dr. Heiser quoted some interesting passages from the Book of Jubilees on demons. So I thought I should read the entire book, and this is where I found my answer to the true date of Pentecost, also known as the Feast of Weeks. In the Book of Jubilees, the Feast of Weeks, also known as Pentecost, is always on the 15th day of the third month. Isaac is born on Pentecost. Judah is born on Pentecost. The covenant with Abraham is made on Pentecost. Jacob and Laban make peace on Pentecost. The rainbow covenant that is made with Noah is on Pentecost. He set his bow in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should not again be a flood on the earth 
to destroy it all the days of the earth. For this reason it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the Feast of Weeks in this month once a year to renew the covenant every year. And this whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation. Why would Pentecost be celebrated in heaven since the creation? Because it's the feast that's about the redemption of mankind. It is on Pentecost that the power of the Holy Spirit is poured out on the apostles and all believers. Jesus in Acts 1.8 says this, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. It's when God comes to live in us. And I, Christ, will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. The calendar issue is still complex. It's a video all by itself, but that's for another day. Having some level of confidence now that Pentecost is always on the 15th day of the third month on the Jewish calendar is important because in the day counts from the Revelation 12 sign to this day, June 15th, 2022, are encoded the rapture. It is 1,726 days from the Revelation 12 sign to this day. Encoded within that number is the number of the rapture found in Strong's Concordance, 726. From this day to April 10th, 2024, it is 665 days to when the moon is in Aries, the day the second dream is fulfilled. So on the 665th day, we see symbolism of the bridegroom, the moon in the constellation of the Lamb, coming for the bride, represented by Jupiter from the Revelation 12 sign. In my last video, I had this as the 666th day. Whenever you calculate dates, you have the option to include the end date in the calculation. At the time of the video, I had not fully understood the sign that would appear on the following day, the sign of the coming of the Antichrist. According to 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 and 8, our departure is before the appearance of the Antichrist. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. The restrainer, the Holy Spirit, leaves with us, and only after that will the Antichrist be revealed. So it only makes sense that we depart on the 665th day, the day before the Antichrist is revealed. From the true date of Pentecost, the day the counting begins in the dream, it is 666 days to the following day, April 11, 2024. On this day, in the constellation of Taurus, the moon, representing Messiah, is in the star cluster known as the Pleiades. In the book of Job, God asked Job if he can bind the chains of the Pleiades, also known as the seven stars, or loose the cords or the belt of Orion. Binding and loosening in the Bible has to do with imprisoning or releasing imprisoned spirits, fallen angels. In the book of Enoch, 200 angels descended on Mount Hermon and rebelled against God by taking human women as wives. The offspring of this union resulted in the giants. The angels that fell petitioned Enoch to go to God to seek forgiveness. None was given. Here's where they are symbolically imprisoned. I saw their seven stars like great burning mountains, and like the spirits that petitioned me. When I inquired regarding them, the angel said, This place is the end of heaven and earth. This has become a prison for the stars and the host of heaven. The moon in the Pleiades symbolizes the Lamb who is going to release demonic entities during the tribulation who are currently in chains. Revelation 9, 1-5 speaks of an angel who is given a key to the bottomless pit. Out of this pit comes locusts whose sting is like scorpions, 
and they are allowed to sting and torment those who do not have the seal of God on their forehead. They are allowed to torment people for five months, but not kill them. People will seek death and not find it. They will long to die, but death will not find them. The constellation of Orion represents the coming of the Antichrist. In the book Zenith 2016, Tom Horn discusses the coming of the Antichrist and why the constellation of Orion represents the Antichrist, and also the relationship between the pyramids and the coming of the Antichrist. The belt of Orion is aligned with the pyramids. The three wandering stars, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, that come into Leo to complete the crown of 12 stars in the Revelation 12 sign, also align with the pyramids, as does the three stars in my dream. Revelation chapter 12 is about our escape from the dragon, the ruler of this world, Satan and his son, a counterfeit savior of the world, the Antichrist. It's a video all by itself, so I'll cover that subject on another day. So in summary, on the 666th day from Pentecost 2022, we are seeing in the heavens the sign of the coming of the Antichrist, along with the demonic hordes to be released on the earth. So now that we've seen what the heavens look like on the 665th and the 666th day from the true date of Pentecost, I want to show you just how detailed the dream is. When I awaken from the dream, I'm at the top of the V. The countdown to the finish of the race begins when two wandering stars enter the constellation of Taurus and align with the star Aldebaran. It is on this day, the day of Pentecost, the alignment matches that of the pyramids, the date which has been hidden till the time of the end. The prophet Daniel in Daniel 12.4 was told this, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. We're in the time of the end. Most of the tools needed to do all of this did not exist 20 years ago. Electronic versions of the Bible allow me to run to and fro rapidly to find what I'm looking for almost instantly. The same goes for looking at the heavens. The mapping in the heavens mimics the mapping of the race in Egypt. From my location, when I awaken to the finish of the race, indicates a period of two something. In this case, just under two years. The race is a marathon race, which is 26.2 miles. The numerical value of the name of God, Yahweh, is 26. Sometime after the race is ended, we will meet with God. In the race, I'm running with a believer named Steve or Stephen. The name Stephen comes from the Greek word for a crown, Stephanos. In Revelation 4, 9 through 11, we read this. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. The book of Revelation is written in Greek. The crowns the twenty-four elders cast down are Stephanos. The name Stephen comes from the Greek word for a crown, Stephanos. The twenty-four elders represent the Christian. When we finish the race and we enter into heaven, we will be given crowns, the Stephanos. It's given to those who have been victorious, for example, to an athlete who has won his race. We cast our crowns before the Lord because our victory is not our own. Our victory is through the blood of the Lamb. He is why we are victorious, not by our works, but by our faith in Christ. In a future video, I will go into more detail on the following dreams that are tied to the eclipse of April 8, 2024. The dream symbolizing our wedding in heaven is also very detailed and interesting. On November 9, 2020, my son and I have four dreams on the same night, all connected to the eclipse of April 8, 2024. His first dream is a flash dream of an eight. Then a little later, an 888. 
He has no idea what it means, but he looks up the meaning of 888 and finds out it's the numeric value of Jesus in Greek. He then has another dream where he begins to float up. The interpretation seems simple enough. The eclipse occurs on the 8th. We float up, rise to meet the Lord in the air, Jesus, whose numerical value in Greek is 888. This is all symbolic. It doesn't mean it will occur on this date. It could or it could be at some time later. That same night in my first dream, I'm in a jungle-style theme park and there are rapture soon signs everywhere. In my second dream, I'm in a war being fought with bows and arrows. I retrieve three of the enemy's arrows. The tips of the arrow look like the obelisks found in Luxor, Egypt. This is where the deification of the pharaohs occurred. Two of the three had the same markings, symbols like you see here. Two of the eclipses that occur over America are total eclipses and one is an annular eclipse. The layout of Washington, D.C., like Luxor, Egypt, is set up to deify men, to turn them into gods. In Luxor, Egypt, to deify the pharaohs. In Washington, to deify the leader of the New World Order, the Antichrist. The dream was a war. Satan and his minions will attempt to thwart the rapture. It's the war spoken of in Revelation chapter 12. So this dream too is connected to the eclipses and the coming of the Antichrist. Two days after the eclipse, the moon is now in the constellation of the Lamb, Aries. This is the fulfillment of the second dream. The dream was in response to a question I had asked of the Lord. Does the moon in the constellation of Aries have anything to do with the rapture? That night I have a dream that symbolizes our wedding in heaven. The story begins in the morning sky and completes in the evening sky from Jerusalem. Visible in the morning sky is Venus, the bright morning star, above the tail of the dragon. It's the dragon whose tail that sweeps down a third of the stars of heaven and casts them to the earth. His army of angelic rebels lies in wait for the rapture in a vain attempt to foil Christ's coming for his bride. Just above Venus and to the right, Saturn and Mars are in conjunction. When Jesus, the true bright morning star, the Lamb of God, takes the fishes home, the bride of Christ, the world will be left with the dragon of Isaiah chapter 14, Lucifer, the morning star who fell from heaven, the Antichrist and the false prophet. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. The heavens are a pictographic storyboard. It's the movement of the sun, moon, planets, and sometimes a comet that turns the heavens into a clock. A clock that tells us what is soon to take place. Psalm 19 tells us, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. Venus is visible from about 545 to 615 a.m. in Jerusalem. It will be visible at the sixth hour, sixth minute, and sixth second. And once again, we see the number of the beast, 666. On the same day, now in the evening sky, the symbols of the bride and the groom are just above the head of the dragon. The image here is that of the dragon bursting forth out of the sea, attempting to devour us as our Savior comes and snatches us away just in the nick of time. From Pentecost, June 15th, the 15th day of the third month on the Jewish calendar, the day the countdown to the finish of the race in Egypt begins is 665 days. The church age, the age of grace, Pentecost, is closed by the rapture. The rapture occurs before the Antichrist is revealed. 
It takes the moon seven days to travel from the constellation of Aries to the constellation representing heaven, Cancer. A Jewish wedding at the time of Christ lasted seven days. The tribulation lasts seven years. We will be in heaven seven years, bride and groom together, celebrating not seven days, but seven years. Cancer, representing heaven, is not very obvious, so let me explain. In Hebrew, it's Sartan. The Hebraic meaning associated with the constellation are that of rest, security, protection, strength, encircling, holding, and binding together. In the middle of the constellation is a nebulous cloud named Prasipi, which means in Arabic, the multitude, offspring, the young, the innumerable seed, the Latins understood it to mean manger, stable, or fold to feed the animals. Jesus tells us he's the good shepherd and we are his sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Cancer represents the sheepfold, in this case, heaven. The constellation of Gemini represents Christ's union with his church. Joseph Zeiss says this about Gemini. The variation as to the sex of the other figure, which is sometimes contemplated as a woman and sometimes as a masculine hero, corresponds also with the biblical representations of the church. God calls Israel his son and also his spouse, the wife of which he is the husband, the one chosen out from among the maidens and wedded to himself. The bride of the lamb in the apocalypse is at the same time described as a man-child, who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and to that end was caught up unto God and his throne. There is no Christ apart from his church, and there is no church except in Christ. They are two, and yet they are one. He in them, and they in him. So what is his is theirs, and what is theirs is his. They are bridegroom and bride, but they're at the same time together, the one man-child appointed to rule all nations with a rod of iron. He's speaking here of Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. He believes, as I do, that this verse is speaking of the rapture of the church. On the 666th day from Pentecost, we see the sign in the heavens of the coming of the Antichrist, which I had covered earlier. I want to make sure you understand the dragon spoken of in Revelation chapter 12, verse 3 and 4, is the dragon you see here. It's the only dragon in the heavens in which the sun, moon, and planets pass through. They all stay very close to this line, the ecliptic. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads. The head of Cetus consists of seven stars and ten horns. Taurus is a horned animal. The head of Taurus consists of ten stars and on his head seven diadems. Within the constellation of Taurus are the Pleiades, also known as the seven stars. In the Bible, the Pleiades and the seven stars are one and the same. Seek him that maketh the seven stars, he who made the Pleiades. One of the stars in the head of Cetus is Menkar. It means the chained enemy. Another star in the tail of the dragon is called Diptha, the overthrown, the thrust down. From Ken Johnson and his book, Ancient Messianic Festivals. Leviathan. We see the seven-headed red dragon in the book of Revelation. All the ancient cultures in the Middle East, including Israel, Babylon, and the Arab peoples, had a concept of a seven-headed sea creature they all called Leviathan, which represented an evil empire that would appear at the end of time. From Job 41, the ancient rabbis believed that Leviathan was a terrible beast that was king of the children of pride, and that he would make a covenant with many and break that covenant, not be a servant forever. 
The three eclipses that cross America are these three. From the Revelation 12 sign to the eclipse of April 8th, 2024, it's six years, six months, and 16 days. Coded within the time frame is the number of the beast, 666. The prophet Joel tells us, The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Where these eclipses occur in the heavens, and for these three where they occur on the earth, tells the story of the coming of the dragon, the rapture, and the tribulation. The story in the heavens begins with the blood moon tetrad and ends with this eclipse here, six years, six months, and 16 days from the Revelation 12 sign. If the moon represents the Messiah, as the ancient rabbis believed, what does a blood moon represent? To find out, we need to look in the heavens on the day that Jesus died. To get an idea of when Jesus died, we need to find the day he was born. Dr. Ernest Martin makes the case in his book, The Star That Astonished the World, that Jesus was born in 3 BC. The theory is based on a series of conjunctions that occur in the constellation of Leo between Jupiter and the star Regulus. Leo is the constellation of the king, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jupiter is the king planet and Regulus the king star. Jupiter then goes into retrograde and hovers over the king star for months. This is what's known as the Star of Bethlehem. Dr. Martin believes Jesus was born on the Feast of Trumpets. Others, such as Mark Biltz and Dr. Ken Johnson, make a very strong case that Jesus was born on Tabernacles. On Tabernacles in 3 BC, the moon is in the constellation of the Lamb. The Lamb who is going to shed his blood on the cross to redeem mankind. In the womb of Virgo is Venus, the bright morning star. Jesus, the bright morning star, is born of a virgin. In the constellation of Capricorn is Mars. The constellation of Capricorn is very strange. Its upper body is that of a dying goat, and the lower the tail of a fish. Both goats and sheep are sacrificed to atone for sins. In Exodus 12.5, the Passover lambs can be taken from the sheep or the goats. The symbol of the Christian is the fish. Mars is a red planet. In Hebrew, Medim, it was associated with the shedding of blood and judgment by the ancient Jews. In the constellation of Capricorn, we see the shed blood of the Lamb will atone for the sins of the Christian, whose symbol is the fish. Between the horns of Taurus is Saturn. Saturn represents Satan. Taurus represents Christ the Judge. 1 John 3.8 tells us the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So the story in the heavens we see on this day is this. The Lamb of God, who is born of a virgin, will pay the price for those who trust in him, whose symbol is the fish, by the shedding of his blood. And by the shedding of his blood, he will destroy the works of the devil. From the date of Jesus' birth to his death, it's 33 and a half years. He began his ministry at 30 and it lasted three and a half years. Calendars do not have a year zero. If they did, this would be 2 BC and that's what you find in the planetarium program Stellarium. 2 BC plus 33 years brings us to the fall of 31 AD. Add six months and that brings us to the spring of 32 AD. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. When the sun goes dark, the stars and planets appear. Those who are at the cross see this. Directly above the crosses and slightly to the south, they see the constellation of Aries. In Hebrew, it's Tale, which means the Lamb. In the constellation of the Lamb is the dim sun. And Venus, the bright morning star, whom we are told in the book of Revelation, is Jesus. Also above is Jupiter. In Hebrew, Zedek, it means the righteous one. It's telling us who is on the cross. The Lamb of God, the righteous one, the bright morning star. Remember, this is the day the Passover lambs are being slain. Halfway around the world, another event is occurring in the heavens.
a blood moon is occurring in the constellation of Libra. The ancient Jewish rabbis believed the moon represented the Messiah and the sun, God. Just like one cannot look at the sun or God, one can look at the moon, which reflects the light of the sun. And just like the moon in the Messiah, we see a reflection of God. Joseph Zeiss, in his book, The Gospel in the Stars, says this about the constellation Libra. Among the Jews, it was denoted by the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, T or Ta, originally written as we still write it, and as written in nearly all the ancient alphabets in the form of a cross, which signified the end, the boundary, the limit, the completion. As the Savior, when about to give up the ghost on the cross, said, It is finished the last letter in the history of his humiliation having been reached. So here we have in the heavens the moon representing Messiah turning blood red in the constellation of the cross. At the same moment, Jesus is on the cross. They can't see this in Jerusalem, but we can. This is for us in the future. It occurs over the same country as the three eclipses, America. This blood moon is foreshadowing the battle against the dragon that will occur during the tribulation. Blood moons represent the atonement of Christ, Christ's death on the cross to pay the price for our sins. The rabbis at the time of Christ and today believe blood moons are a sign of judgment coming to Israel. They are correct because they have rejected Jesus as Messiah. They are not protected by his shed blood. That's why the first of the three blood moon tetrads occurred after Israel became a nation. The blood moons weren't about Israel becoming a nation but that this series of blood moons was the first of three to warn the newly formed nation that judgment is coming if the nation doesn't recognize Jesus as Messiah, the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation. The eclipses are in groups. This first group of eclipses all occur in constellations having to do with the rapture. The second group in constellations having to do with the tribulation the last four in constellations having to do again with the rapture. These three eclipses are those that occur over America. They have to do with the escape from the dragon. This group of eclipses, starting with the blood moon tetrad and ending with this eclipse in the constellation of Gemini, are all in constellations having to do with the rapture. There are seven blood moons in this group. Those covered by the blood of Christ will not be here during the seven-year tribulation, symbolized by this group of seven eclipses. These three blood moons occur in the constellations of heaven and the atonement, Cancer and Capricorn. The blood moons of the blood moon tetrad alternate between the constellation of Virgo and the constellation of Pisces, the Christian. All total lunar eclipses from the first of the blood moon tetrad are all accounted for. All total solar and annular eclipses starting with this eclipse here are accounted for. Prior to this eclipse are several total solar eclipses interspersed between the blood moons. They too are all in constellations having to do with the rapture. Between the blood moon tetrad and this blood moon triad is the Revelation 12 sign. From the last blood moon of the blood moon tetrad, which occurs in the constellation of the Christian, Pisces, to the Revelation 12 sign, it is 726 days. 726 in Strong's is the rapture. Even encoded within the number 726 is the time and who we will be with during the tribulation. 26 is the numerical value of Yahweh in Hebrew. 7. The number of years of the tribulation. Where this blood moon occurs in the heavens tells the story of our escape from the dragon. The last blood moon of the blood moon tetrad occurs above the tail of the dragon. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. The dragon and his army lie in wait to prevent the rapture. But before the dragon can devour us, the bright morning star Jesus will snatch us from the dragon. And after we depart, who comes to fill our place? The dark trinity of Lucifer, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. From the Revelation 12 sign to the day the countdown to the end of the race begins, 
the 15th day of the third month on the Jewish calendar, Pentecost, a feast day, a day you meet with God, it is 1,726 days. Again, encoded within that day count is the number of the rapture, 726. Like the last blood moon of the blood moon tetrad, it's telling us who is going to escape the dragon and the wrath of the Lamb, those who are covered by the blood of the Lamb. On Pentecost, God, in the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, came to dwell within each believer, marking each believer as belonging to him. It is those who have the mark of Christ, the Holy Spirit, dwelling within them that will escape. It is the last of these three eclipses that cross America that completes the dream of the race in Egypt. The race is finished when the eclipse appears at the finish line of the race in the dream. The race is a marathon race, 26.2 miles. Again, encoded within the distance of the race is the name of God, Yahweh, which has a numerical value of 26. Just like the word for the rapture, Harpazo, has the name of God encoded within it. Sometime after the race is finished, we will meet with God. In Revelation chapter 12, our escape is from the dragon. The eclipse occurs six years, six months, and 16 days from the Revelation 12 sign, the beginning of the story of our escape from the dragon, whose number is 666. Two days later, dream number two is fulfilled when the moon enters Aries, 665 days from Pentecost. The following day, the 666th day, the moon enters the Pleiades, visible in the evening sky along with Orion, the consolation associated with the Antichrist. Job 38.31 says this, Can you bind the chains of Pleiades or loose the cords of Orion? Only God can, and this is referring to the demonic forces he will loosen upon the earth. We depart before this, symbolized by the dream of the wedding in heaven on the 665th day from Pentecost. This series of eclipses all occur in constellations having to do with the tribulation. The tribulation lasts seven years. There are seven eclipses. The tribulation begins with the rider of the white horse. These two eclipses are connected to the constellation of Taurus, Christ the Judge. During the tribulation, the lion of the tribe of Judah, who is found worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals to start the tribulation. It is then the lamb in Revelation 6.1 who opens the first of seven seals, releasing the four horsemen. Three of the eclipses occur in the constellation of Scorpio, symbolic of the kingdom of Satan. The last eclipse occurs in the constellation of Libra, the moon in Libra, the sun in Taurus. Christ the judge is coming to judge the earth. It's a blood moon. Those who are covered by the blood of Christ will not experience his wrath. We are not destined for his wrath. We will depart beforehand. This is not the end of the story. There's one more sign to come. Red dragons dwell in red seas. When we overlay the red dragon and the fishes on a map of Egypt and the Red Sea, the timing to what is most likely the final sign of the rapture of the church appears. Just like when I overlaid the map of the race in Egypt on the heavens and the three stars aligned with the three pyramids. And when we look at the eclipses in the heavens and the constellations they appear in, and when we look at the paths and where they occur on the earth, we get a sense of timing of when the dragon will attempt to devour the Christian. In the book of Jasher, there is a detailed account of what happened to Joseph, far more detailed than what you find in the Bible. The book of Jasher is referenced multiple times in the Bible. After Joseph becomes the second highest leader in all of Egypt with only Pharaoh above him, Joseph's brothers come to him and they eat with him. Joseph has Benjamin sitting with him on his throne as they are eating. While Joseph is conversing with Benjamin, he has his servants bring him a map of the stars. 
and he ordered them to bring before him his map of the stars, whereby Joseph knew all the times. And Joseph said unto Benjamin, I have heard that the Hebrews are acquainted with all wisdom. Do you know anything of this? And Benjamin said, Thy servant is knowing also in all the wisdom which my father taught me. And Joseph said unto Benjamin, Now look at this instrument and understand where thy brother Joseph is in Egypt. You who said went down to Egypt. And Benjamin beheld that instrument with the map of the stars of heaven, and he was wise and looked therein to know where his brother was. And Benjamin divided the whole land of Egypt into four divisions. And he found that he who was sitting upon the throne before him was his brother Joseph. And Benjamin wondered greatly. And when Joseph saw that his brother Benjamin was so much astonished, he said unto Benjamin, What hast thou seen, and why art thou astonished? And Benjamin said unto Joseph, I can see by this that Joseph my brother sitteth here with me upon the throne. And Joseph said unto him, I am Joseph thy brother, reveal not this thing unto thy brethren. Behold, I will send thee with them, and when they go away, I will command them to be brought back again into the city, and I will take thee away from them. In order to determine where Joseph is in Egypt requires three things, a map of the heavens, a map of Egypt, and some type of instrument. This is not much different from what I've shown you thus far. We have a map of America, a map of Egypt, and a map of the heavens. We have an instrument, a software program called Stellarium, which allows us to map the heavens. Contained within the account of the Exodus is a type or foreshadowing of the rapture, our escape from the dragon. In Exodus 12.37, we are told the Israelites begin their journey out of Egypt from Ramses. They then stopped at Sukkoth and then continued along one of these two paths and set up camp on this side of the Red Sea. And then they crossed the Red Sea, either here or here, and then camped at the base of Mount Sinai. The location of Mount Sinai, the Dead Sea, and the Sea of Galilee are lined up to match the sequencing of the rapture found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. It was at Mount Sinai that the Israelites became God's bride. It was at the sound of a loud trumpet blast that they were to come to the mountain. God came down, Moses went up. At the rapture, a trumpet will sound when Jesus comes for his bride. Next and directly above Mount Sinai is the Dead Sea. And the dead in Christ will rise first. The trumpet sounds and then the dead in Christ will rise first. Directly above the Dead Sea, is the Sea of Galilee. This is where the account of the 153 fish took place. When the disciples come off the boat and go to Jesus, he has a charcoal fire going. He already has fish, dead fish laid out around the fire with bread. The dead fish represent the dead in Christ, just like the Dead Sea. They are with Jesus before the live fish are brought to him. The dead in Christ rise first, then we who are alive second. The charcoal fire represents hell. The dead fish who are in the fire are taken out of the fire by Jesus and are with Jesus. Without Jesus, our destiny is hell. He also has bread for them. He is the bread of life. He tells the disciples to bring some of the fish they have just caught, 153 large fish, so many, yet the net was not torn. The catch is so large they have to leave the net in the water. They can't get it into the boat. This tells us that Jesus is not going to lose any that belong to him. These fish are still in the water. They are still alive when they are brought to Jesus. They are being snatched from the dragon whose abode is water, the sea. The sequencing matches that of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Directly above the Sea of Galilee is Mount Hermon. Genesis 6, 1-4 tells us that the sons of God, angels, saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. The offspring of this forbidden union were the Nephilim, the giants. The book of Enoch confirms that this understanding of Genesis 6, 1-4 is correct. 
It also tells us that this is the mountain where the 200 angels descended from heaven to earth. Mount Hermon may represent or be an actual gate to and from heaven. At the rapture, we leave earth and enter heaven. At the same time, Satan and any angels still in heaven that have joined the rebellion are cast out of heaven to the earth. When we overlay the constellations of the red dragon and the fishes on the Red Sea, we see the great red dragon from Revelation chapter 12 dwelling in the Red Sea, and the two fishes dwelling in the two gulfs that form a V. The eclipse occurs in the same gulf where Pharaoh the dragon and his army were drowned. In Ezekiel 32.2, Pharaoh is described to be like a dragon. Son of man, raise a lamentation over Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say to him, You consider yourself a lion of the nations, but you are like a dragon in the seas. You burst forth in your rivers, trouble the waters with your feet, and foul their rivers. The Israelites escaped from the dragon Pharaoh. Their escape was by a divine intervention. God parts the sea, and they pass through. Our escape from the dragon will also be a divine intervention via the rapture. The eclipse occurs six years, six months, and 16 days from the Revelation 12 sign, the number of the dragon, 666. The intersection of the path of the first and last eclipse occurs in an area known as Little Egypt. The rituals performed to deify the Antichrist, to make him a god, come from Egypt, and are based on the same rituals performed to turn the Pharaoh into the god Horus. Pharaoh is a type of the Antichrist. Venus, the morning star, is above the tail of the dragon. On the map, it's located in approximately the same location as Mount Sinai, where the Israelites met with God. In Revelation 22.16, Jesus says this, I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. It was at Mount Sinai that God betrothed the Israelites as his bride. The bride of Christ is the church, the Christian. The symbol of the Christian is the fish. When we overlay the constellations having to do with the rapture of the church, the fishes and the dragon, on a map of Egypt and the Red Sea, we see they were supernaturally designed to align. Jesus, the uncreated creator, made the heavens and the earth, and organize the stars in the constellations that tell the story of redemption. Jesus is revealing to his bride the nearness of his coming. As the wedding approaches, the signs of the nearness of the wedding are everywhere. A bride who's paying attention can't miss them. The eclipse is about the coming of the dragon and our escape from the dragon. The dragon, as we have been shown in Revelation chapter 12, is coming to devour the man-child, the Christian. It occurs on the band of the fish, the symbol of the Christian. I talked earlier about the moon representing Messiah and the sun, God. Jesus is going to snatch the fishes from the dragon who dwells in the sea and before he comes to judge the world. It occurs on the band of the fish on the right. It was in this gulf on the right that the dragon Pharaoh, a type, a foreshadowing of the Antichrist, was drowned. The Israelites escape from the dragon. After they escape from the dragon, they meet with God at Mount Sinai. When they hear the sound of a loud trumpet blast, they come to the mountain. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai on top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Very clear typology of the rapture. At the rapture, at the sound of a trumpet, the trumpet of God, Jesus, the bright morning star, is going to snatch the fishes, the Christian, the bride of Christ, from the dragon in the sea. The morning star is located in the same location as Mount Sinai, where the Israelites met with God at the sound of a trumpet, the trumpet of God. Moses went up and God came down. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. At the rapture, the bright morning star, Jesus, will come and take his bride home, whose symbol is the fish. The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we who are alive shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. 
the ancient peoples, including the Jews, believed that gates to heaven were found at mountaintops. The angels that rebelled against God descended from heaven and came down at Mount Hermon, a gate to and from heaven. After we meet in the air, we are taken to heaven. At the end of chapter 26 in Isaiah, we read this, Your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. For your dew is a dew of light, and the earth will give birth to the dead. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no longer cover its slain. In that day the Lord, with his hard and great and strong sword, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. During the tribulation, God is going to use the dragon to punish the inhabitants of the earth, and then he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. In their attempt to foil the rapture, they are defeated and thrown out of heaven to the earth. After we depart, the world is left with the dark trinity of Lucifer, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. At the midpoint of the tribulation, the Antichrist, who will be the incarnate son of Lucifer, most likely possessed by Satan himself, will enter the temple of God, desecrate the temple, and declare himself to be God. Revelation chapter 12 ends with the dragon standing on the sand of the sea. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And he stood on the sand of the sea. And when we look at a map of the Red Sea, we see the dragon Lucifer in the desert sands near the Red Sea, very specifically at Mount Sinai, where God met with the Israelites. For a very short time, Satan, through his incarnate son, the Antichrist, will be allowed to play God. Much of the world will align themselves with the dragon, take the mark and be forever lost. During the seven-year tribulation, God will use the powers of darkness to bring judgment to the world and salvation to the nation of Israel. By the end of the tribulation, the religious leaders of Israel will come to realize that Jesus is their Messiah, and they will come to worship him as such. At the end of the tribulation, we return as part of God's army with Christ, and he, Christ, he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. Thanks for watching.